Last night, there was a problem with a Falcon 9 launch, its first failure in nine years. And even though it was a fairly minor failure, it will have a domino effect. And more than that, it's going to have a, an effect on the way that we perceive launch and the space industry in a way that we've almost forgotten over the past nine years since the last incident with Falcon 9. So what happened last night, it was a fairly standard I don't, I hesitate to use the word routine, but I will use the word routine here. A routine launch of Starlink satellites. Those go up very frequently, these Starlink launches. It's gotten to the point where I don't even watch them live. I was following along with the tweets on my phone. Like it was something that I just take for granted. And you as well might have just taken for granted that a Falcon 9 would launch out of Vandenberg in California and that Starlinks would be deployed. It was 20 of them and that everything was going to be just fine as it always is except spaceflight is not routine. Even a company as reliable as SpaceX, even a rocket as reliable as Falcon 9 is still not going to be completely 100% safe. I was actually talking to a client recently where he was trying to use the word routine. He comes from an aviation background. Aircraft routinely travel thousands upon thousands every day. And unfortunately, you can't have that same mentality in spaceflight, not yet. Not even with something as reliable and frequent as a Falcon 9 launch. And this is something that admittedly I have started to do. I was talking to him about not using the word routine when at the same time I was struggling to find another word because we have sort of taken for granted that these Falcon 9 launches are routinely happening every few days. But I remember I was there during the last incident. It was the CRS-7 mission, June 28th, 2015. I was watching it from a friend's boat on Banana River. And it wasn't immediately clear what had happened. I thought maybe just the rocket disappeared behind a cloud. It wasn't until I heard the announcement that there was a problem that it exploded. And that was a bit of a gut punch because I actually had helped out in a small way with one of the payloads that was on board that was heading to the International Space Station. As much as that was painful, it actually wasn't too terribly surprising because at that point, we sort of expected in the back of our minds that there would eventually be a failure because failures happen in spaceflight. That same uh, experiment that I had briefly touched that was on that CRS-7 mission had actually exploded previously on an orbital sciences rocket, a Cygnus resupply mission earlier. So it was one of those things where at that time, those of us in the spaceflight industry accepted the fact that there would be problems, there would be failures. And only because of the past nine years that have been so successful for SpaceX and the Falcon rockets, have I almost become accustomed to them launching so successfully time and time and time again. Forgetting the fact that there is that risk involved. Yes, you, you can know it intellectually, but then not expect it as you hear that another successful deployment of Starlink satellites has gone when you barely even paid attention to it. What happened with that CRS-7 mission nine years ago was slightly different, but sort of analogous to what happened here where there was that problem with the second stage. That second stage had an overpressurized event because of a failed strut and therefore the second stage exploded. The payloads on board actually were not immediately destroyed. They were only destroyed because there was a failure to launch the parachute and therefore it was not able to safely splash down into the water. Um, and my understanding, now it's still early, but my understanding is that something similar happened here where there was a liquid oxygen leak that caused ice to build up and when they lit that engine it exploded Exploded, but the Starlink satellites were not actually immediately destroyed. They were put in a lower orbit than intended and unable to raise to a higher orbit. And so they will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere a lot earlier than intended. Not the same issue, but similar enough. And I just got off the phone with a journalist who wanted to know, would this have been catastrophic if it had people on board. Well, I don't think we can really say one way or the other until the investigation is done. But my understanding is that no, it would not have been an immediate death to any astronauts on board Dragon capsule. But that's the thing is until you understand the problem and how to fix it, you don't want to endanger any lives. So this grounding of Falcon 9 is not just going to have an impact on Falcon 9's uncrewed schedule. It's got uh, additional Starlinks. It also has commercial missions lined up. It was actually going to launch a Cygnus as a resupply mission to the International Space Station. It has to launch Cygnus right now. Um, it gets the pr it has the privilege of launching Cygnus right now because the Antares is being redesigned with uh, domestic U.S. engines instead of Russian engines, and so all of those missions are now delayed indefinitely. 
Um, I don't think it's going to be a long delay, but we can't really know. The last time that SpaceX had an incident, nine years ago, it was delayed six months. I do not see this issue from last night's rocket anomaly delaying SpaceX for six months. Absolutely not. It was a fairly minor issue, but it will delay the missions. It will you know, delay this packed schedule that SpaceX has, and it'll have the most serious impact on the human spaceflight missions. Polaris Dawn had just announced that it was launching on, or no earlier than July 31st. That's already been delayed. So <laughs> unfortunately, a delayed mission is going to be delayed even longer. That will likely have an impact on the Crew-9 mission to the International Space Station. They're just not going to take any kind of risks that they are going to put people on board a rocket until they fully understand that this rocket is safe for people to fly. I believe that they're going to determine it's safe pretty quickly, but you're still going to see that slippage. That balancing act between Crew-9 and the return of Starliner all of that is now in play as well. When are the Starliner crew coming home? They don't have a date yet. They were saying end of July. That Crew-9 mission was supposed to be in August. Everything is sort of in flux. Even though this was a fairly minor issue, it will actually have a domino effect because of SpaceX's success and how frequently they launch. Their launch cadence has increased so much that they just have things lined up. And now that they've had things lined up that are currently on pause, Everything is a bit of a jumbled mess right now. And I think that this adds evidence or reminds us of why we need different systems in place. Because as I've been talking lately about Starliner and about the Ariane 6, and people have been coming back and pushing and saying, why do we need Boeing Starliner? Why do we need an Ariane 6? Why do we need ULA? Why do we need any of these other systems when SpaceX can do it all? And SpaceX has been phenomenally successful, more successful than any of those companies. However, you do not want to rely on one rocket. You do not want to rely on one system because if it's paused, then everything is paused. And that is why dissimilar redundancy is important to NASA. This is why we want multiple systems, multiple launch service providers, multiple ways to get to space and back. Another thing this will do is empower SpaceX's competitors, which are taking any opportunity to punch at SpaceX, especially ULA here because ULA is so proud of its 100% success rate. If you only look at ULA's history as a company and not look at the early times of Atlas and Delta, and you only take into account ULA launches, they have a 100% success rate. And they mention that over and over and over again. And that is something they're very proud of, as they should be proud of it. People who work in space are generally on team space, like they generally are space fans. But that's not going to stop the marketing departments or the, the executives of ULA and some of these other competitive companies, Blue Origin comes to mind, from looking at this incident at SpaceX and saying, this is why you cannot rely on SpaceX. Look at us. We have a 100% track record in terms of ULA or um, you know, Blue Origin will have its own marketing spin. I would not be at all surprised if SpaceX's competitors, despite being on Team Space, really take this opportunity to emphasize the fact that SpaceX is not infallible, that Falcon 9 is not infallible. And it's a lesson that I want all of us to take to heart, actually. I don't want us to rely simply on Falcon 9. I'm a SpaceX fan and what they are able to accomplish, but um, I don't want us to rely on one service provider, on one rocket. I don't want us to become complacent. And this is a good reminder on something that's fairly low key, you know, 20 uh, Starlink satellites, I mean, that's not like, that's not nothing, but that's not a huge loss either. The way that they pump out these Starlink satellites in their factory, there's thousands of them already in orbit. You know, something like 6,000 are already in orbit right now. So it's not a tremendous loss and it's a really good opportunity to remind ourselves that we cannot become complacent in spaceflight, that spaceflight is not routine, that there can be these incidents and not only can, that there will be these incidents. And we need to be prepared in terms of contingency plans and backups and any other way that we can prepare in case something happens in the future that is more catastrophic than this. I want to hear your guesses. I want to know how long you guys think that Falcon 9 is going to be grounded for. We know that the FAA is requiring an investigation of what happened. It's My guess is not six months. It's not going to be six months like the last time. Um, I'd be surprised if it's even three months. I think it's going to be less. Um, I want to know your guesses though. How long do you think that it's going to take? Hopefully it won't take very long. Hopefully SpaceX will get back to work. Um, really, not only America, but the world needs it.